Hailed by critics and worshipped by fans, Fight Club has cemented its name in pop culture history. Fight Club brilliantly manages to entertain its audience while simultaneously critiquing society itself. There is only one problem, however. For some reason, it seems like the most dedicated fans have completely misunderstood the point of the entire movie. Instead of seeing it as a cautionary tale, they hail Tyler Durden as an icon to be aspired to. I don't think these fans are necessarily wrong. Rather than being wrong, I believe that they only see half the picture to an artistic masterpiece. In order to truly understand the beauty of Fight Club, we must first take a deep dive into a major theme of the movie, consumerism. According to Google, the definition of consumerism is the protection and the promotion of the interests of the consumer. This is an incredibly optimistic way of defining consumerism, one which Fight Club would strongly disagree with. See, Fight Club believes that consumerism is the root of what's wrong with society. This belief is manifested through the main character of the movie, the narrator. At the start of the movie, the narrator is the ultimate materialist. He lacks goals, ambitions, success, and perhaps most importantly, a name for himself. He is completely stripped of any defining characteristics. The only thing that could possibly classify as an interest is his apartment. He fills it with branded IKEA furniture in order to make it as perfect as it could be. This is crucial to understand about the narrator in order to understand the movie. See, the narrator has a void in his heart. This void is caused by a lack of identity, spiritual fulfillment, and meaningful relationships. The narrator doesn't understand what's causing the void, however. He's desperate for a way to make the void go away. This is where capitalism enters the picture. Corporations try to sell products to consumers in order to generate profit. A big problem is that a lot of consumers don't want to buy your product. How many men are really interested in smelling good by using Axe body spray? This is where the genius of the corporations kick in. Instead of advertising their product in a normal way, they offer us their product as a solution to a larger problem in life. Axe promises that if you wear their cologne, women will be swooning over you. Will Axe actually solve your dating problems? No, but they most certainly will prey on the insecurity you have in order to get you to buy their product. This isn't even the worst part, however. The true danger comes when the consumer starts identifying with their brands. You see it everywhere, from supreme hype beasts to anime base dwellers. These people fundamentally lack a sense of identity. Corporations have also adapted to this and now offer entire communities revolving around their products. Imagine you're a lonely 14 year old boy. You kinda like Dragon Ball and Naruto, but it's never been anything special in your life. One day, however, you discover an entire community of people who also like Dragon Ball and Naruto. Suddenly, your sense of loneliness disappears as you make new friends online who also like anime. The insidious side of this is that the anime communities revolve around the consumption of anime and anime merch. In order to silence the feeling of loneliness inside of you, you need to watch the latest isekai show and buy the latest figurine effectively creating an evil spiral where the root of the problem is never solved while you keep on buying anime merch as a band-aid solution, trapping you in a never-ending cycle of consumption. This is what the narrator of Fight Club symbolizes at the start of the movie. Instead of anime, he's obsessed with his IKEA furnished apartment. But no matter how many products he buys, the root problem is still there. He has no name and no identity outside of his material possessions. He's trying to solve his internal problems through external means, something which he'll never succeed with. In order to cope with his vain and empty life, he develops a new identity. Meet Tyler Durden, the symbol of anarchy and masculinity. Tyler Durden is everything that the narrator isn't. He's muscular, sexy, and a leader. He's the complete opposite of himself. 
whereas the narrator is stuck buying more and more products in order to feel better about himself, Tyler completely rejects that idea. He says, You're not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. Not the car you drive. Not the contents of your wallet. Not your fucking khakis. Tyler despises the consumerist lifestyle that we live, constantly taking jabs at our corporationalized culture. His sharpest critique can be found in this quote. Is that what a man looks like? <laughs> ah, self-improvement is masturbation. What Tyler is trying to say is that self-improvement itself is something to be consumed. The self-help industry is a multi-billion dollar business that sells you the illusion that if you work hard enough, you can become a millionaire. It gives you the identity of an upcoming millionaire instead of what you truly are, a consumer forming your identity around self-help products. So what's Tyler's solution to breaking the consumerist mindset? It's rebellion and a return to traditional masculinity. The only way to break free is by rebelling against society itself. This rebellion is symbolized through fighting. Fight. Fighting is something that's shunned by society. By starting a fight club, you have effectively started to break free of society's rules. This can be seen in the most famous quote of the movie. The first rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. The second rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. Despite the only rule being not to talk about the fight club, the club keeps on growing. The only way that the club can grow is through people talking about it. The only rule set up by Tyler is constantly being broken by its members, but that's the entire point. Tyler wants everyone in the club to start breaking rules and to be set free from societal norms. But you can't talk about Fight Club without talking about masculinity. The movie goes out of its way to show how emasculated the narrator feels. At the start of the movie, he suffers from insomnia. The only thing that cured him was by going to emotional support groups for men who literally had their balls cut off. Only among men who have been castrated can the narrator get the emotional relief that he longs for. In normal terms, the narrator is an emasculated man who gets no bitches. By contrast, Tyler comes off as a sex god, with Marla saying things like, my god, I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. Tyler is the epitome of masculinity. It's no wonder that the narrator would end up idolizing him, doing everything he can in order to become just like him. Both the narrator and the cult members are trapped in a materialist hellscape that emasculates them. Tyler offers an attractive solution to these disillusioned men. He offers them freedom and a return to masculinity. This is why the diehard fans of the movie idolize Tyler. They live in the same world that the narrator does, stuck in a materialist wasteland that actively emasculates and alienates them. They are just like the narrator. Tyler isn't only selling freedom and masculinity to the narrator, he's selling it to the audience alike. But it's important to remember that Fight Club doesn't end here. The first half of the movie is dedicated to make us understand the appeal of Tyler's cult. The second half of the movie is dedicated to show us the destruction and anarchy that his cult brings about, which literally causes the end of society. Fight Club is a warning to men. It's not a warning about how effeminate we have become or that we should strive to be just like Tyler Durden. It's a warning about how anarchy and masculinity can completely destroy society. See, Tyler perfectly pinpoints a problem in our modern world. We have become slaves to corporations. He shows us a disconnect between our true nature and the life that we live in this postmodern hellscape. The problem is that while he highlights the problem, he offers us a child's solution. Instead of coming up with a sustainable alternative to our current society, he decides to throw a temper tantrum like a little child. He's angry and he wants the system to collapse, but he offers nothing to replace it with. In his eyes, this is true freedom. He says, 
It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. This perfectly highlights Tyler's ideology. He offers us a world where freedom means happiness, which is why he wants the destruction of everything. This simply isn't true, however. Some of the greatest joys in life can be found within responsibility and commitment. Joy can be found in your role as a mentor, your role as a friend, and your role as a parent. The freedom of having no responsibility also comes with the loss of the joys of friendships, careers, and parenthood. This is where Marla enters the picture. Marla is an authentic girl in an otherwise inauthentic life who's on the same wavelength as the narrator. She offers him a genuine connection in an artificial life. Instead of pursuing a relationship with her, he outright denies his feelings, as we can see in this scene. You're not into her, are you? No, God, not at all. The narrator is too afraid of the responsibilities and emotional vulnerability that Marla presents. Instead, he chooses the childish rebellion and masculinity that Tyler presents. This is also what led to the end of the movie. Throughout the entire movie, Tyler never offered a genuine connection to anyone. He only offered the illusion of a connection through freedom and a physical beating. Marla is the only person to genuinely care about the narrator. In the end, the narrator kills Tyler in order to be with Marla. This is also the final message of the movie. The narrator rejects the anarchy and freedom that Tyler presents in order to hold hands with Marla, the person that he loves.